Hey friends, apologize it took me so long to get on here. Next time I will definitely let y'all guys know what time dinner is going to be. I had some stuff I had to take care of and I tried to tidy up around the house too while I was at it. So what I'm planning on doing, hey guys, hey, good to see y'all. I was just saying, I apologize it took me so long to get on here. And next time I tell y'all guys I'm going to do like a dinner video or something, I'll let you know around what time. I, I was cleaning up. Took me a while. I still have dishes that need to be done. Honestly, I've just been in camp mode over like the past month or so and just kind of like really batching. So the place has kind of gotten a little bit out of uh, out of order. And so now I'm spending like the next week going through the house, cleaning and making the place real nice. So just bear with me, please. Welcome to the kitchen. I'm so glad you could make it. Let's see how y'all guys are doing. Good evening, Matt. Hey, good evening, Mickey. I'll put these dumb red shades on so y'all don't have to look at my bloodshot eyes. Uh, hi from Oklahoma. Hey, hey, Emily. Uh, hey, A.E. Katie. Jamma. Hi, Willie. Michelle. Jersey. Gimli. I missed that one. Hi, Jersey. That one. Well, it's so good to see all of y'all guys tonight. What I'm planning on doing, I think, well, if y'all can stand the sight of me, I, these things are so red, it's just crazy. Uh, one thing about doing is, if y'all guys want to stay for uh, for dinner, I'm going to go ahead and cook um, hot my dad's hot sauce, and I'm also going to do hamburgers. Now, I've got all the things that I like for my hamburgers. I didn't get lettuce, unfortunately, though that's okay. I can do with or without lettuce. So I figured that I'd just set y'all guys up over here. I'm still kind of, cause like, like I said, I didn't get a chance to get all the dishes and stuff done. So like, I don't have my cutting board. I've got like one plate washed. I'm used to this. It's kind of my form of batch in it. So this portion of this video that I'm cooking, I'm just going to do it like I normally do when I'm just here by myself. Then in my future cooking videos, I will use like a cutting board and have all of the all the normal kitchen stuff. I even found my spaghetti colander uh, tonight, which I know, how does a person lose a spaghetti colander, right? So I figure if it's cool with y'all guys, I'm just going to set you up over here by the sink. And as I move through doing what I'm doing, we'll just kind of like improvise together if that's cool. Hi, Matt. Todd from Nassau. Hey, Todd. Lucky says, hi, Matt. It's Brenda from Minnesota. Hey, Minnesota. I like your house. It looks warm and cozy. Thank you. It really is a really nice little house. I'm so blessed to have it. Uh, I can't say enough about it. It is so warm and so cozy and so perfectly quaint at the same time. I'll give you a look around, actually. Here, let me get this. I've got a light plugged in. I'm going to find a portable battery for this light because we'll need that for cooking. Finally got light bulbs. Uh, one of my friends mailed me light bulbs and then I used them all and then it's just like it snowballs. So finally have light in the joint, which is nice is the punchline. So yeah, come on out here. I'll show you the place. So we got the kitchen area here. That blue bag's just what I use for a trash bag. Yeah, the... The recliner is a spot that I'm storing everything right now. Uh, that box there is all my important paperwork. Notice the floor is nice and clean. The shelves over here and here are going to get a lot nicer. I pulled a lot of this junk out already, but then there's a lot more that needs to come out and get sorted through. Uh, TV area. This is a, it's my drafting tables why it is, but it's really where I... I kind of like stage all of my stuff. I'm trying to get all of the stuff ordered up and boxed so that it's all in categories. And then I'm going to put them on the shelves in my bedroom in here. Kind of get it out of the way. Plus, when I start doing my drawing, I want to do it all right here. I had a bunch of stuff stuffed up inside this little niche here for the longest time. I just got that cleaned. Uh, like I said, I've got dishes I need to do still. And then, yeah, like seriously, all of this needs to be fixed. The bottom run here just needs to be reorganized, but I need to pull everything out of the top two and figure out what stays and what goes. 
it's really nice. I, I've tried to always keep the place clean because a clean environment really helps with mindset. However, all of the little bits of junk and clutter that can build up over the course of time have definitely built up. So like I said, I'm doing the deep clean now and it's a lot better. I mean, I really enjoy being able to see the corner over here, you know? Okay, let's get to cooking, guys. So what I figure I'd do is set you up over here like this. That's not too bad. We'll work on this. We'll make it work. Let me, this light's going to need to be changed so it's not glaring in your face. That, no, that's not much better at all, is it? Well, I guess I'll be able to see, though. Uh, how's that working for y'all, guys? That's bad. Burgers sound so good. I know I'm starving. I really am. Is your house easy to heat over winter? Yes, it's not bad. The whole place runs on electricity. So in the winter, the electric bill kind of skyrockets. It's definitely worth it, though. It sure beats the heck out of living outside, you know? Okay, so I've got... I need to wash this pan still. I'm going to do burgers in it, and then I'm going to do the hot sauce in this pan here. And this plate, in my batch ant lifestyle, I've learned how to use one thing for everything. So the plate here is not only going to be my dinner plate, it's also going to be my cutting board. I need my knife. Hang on. Uh, there we go. Okay, and we're going to need that other light because it's still dark in here. Uh, put that battery where? There we go. Hang on, hang on. I'm on my way back, guys. Where did I? No, I don't know where I put my ibuprofen. Okay. That's the problem with cleaning everything up. I move everything from one spot to another so that it gives me the opportunity to clean. I don't know where the heck I've put anything. And I am going to have to grab a couple of ibuprofen. A thumping headache today. Let's see if we can get this. Maybe. Why is that burner hot? It's still on. Uh, Maybe we'll just try that. That's good enough for me. If y'all can see, I'm good. Good, guys? So cool to have y'all over here like this. It's actually like you've come over for dinner. I like, and this isn't a commercial, but I'm not doing a commercial for these. I've got these red copper pans, and they come in this set. And I will warn you, if, you, if a person doesn't take really good care of them and season them like every couple weeks or so, they will start to stick and they can scratch and everything and get to be a bit of a nightmare. Mine, every couple weeks, I stop, I clean them, and then I re-season them, which is pretty easy. Where's my scrub scrubber? Don't oh, hang on, I know. Uh, hmm. What do I do with that? There we go. See, I'd lose my head if I sewn on. But what I do to, to season them is pretty simple. I just heat up, clean them up real good, put them on the stove, and then heat them. Let them heat real hot. We're talking like scalding hot. Then turn it off, take a little bit of oil from the bottom of that pan, and then just wipe it around with like a, uh, a paper towel, and then let it cool like that. And what happens is it'll pull that grease into that red copper, and it's like totally uh, stick resistant. Non-stick. Okay, so I'm just going to get everything cleaned up real fast. The hot sauce will take the longest amount of time, probably. What I'm going to do is cook the hot sauce in this pan, and then I'm going to do the hamburger in this other little pan I have cleaning over here. And that's my coffee you hear beeping in the background. How have y'all guys been doing today? Y'all been doing well? Laura says, can't wait to top your to top your dad's 
chili on my hamburger. Yum. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, Matthew says, smells really good, man. Hoorah, hoorah, Matt, right? Uh, damn, I'm going right now to make some hamburgers. It's 12.20 a.m. in Brazil. Cool, Brazil. Hoorah. That sounds like something I would do at 12.20 a.m. I actually do midnight snack a lot. One of my go-to midnight snacks, though, is uh, breakfast. I like to have like scrambled eggs and uh, and cinnamon toast. I got sausage this time instead of bacon, so that's gonna be really good. All right, so yeah, cutting board is this. This is hot enough. If I can get that washed up nice, and so yeah, we'll start the hot sauce because that only a little bit to cook down, and then what we're gonna do, we can go ahead and I. Uh, make the hamburgers while the hot sauce cooks down and everything. I'm going to need my scratcher for this one. Hang on. Hmm. What did I do with that? Okay, I was cleaning over here. Oh, there we go. It'll be better in here in like maybe a week once I get everything reorganized and fixed. I just, like I said, I've been on survival mode recently, and that's, uh, that's no way to actually live. That's just how we survive, you know? So it feels good to be kind of back doing things again. Mm -hmm. That's my nighttime coffee right there. I try and make it weaker, but it never is. It's always about the strongest morning coffee. I also like these uh, steel wool scrubber ball things. They last forever if you take care of them, and they can get almost anything off. And another thing about the red copper, and I know this sounds like a commercial. Like I said, I might do a commercial for them. They're that good. But you can use a scratcher or something on them. As long as you season them afterwards, they'll be fine. I mean, I wouldn't like go scratching a knife across it or something, you know, but an abrasive like this isn't bad for them. And they're uh, non-toxic too. So you don't have any of that like uh, coating and stuff that might leach off into the food. Hi. Hey friend. Gina from Virginia, love the videos, keep them coming, happy holidays, Matt. Thank you, Virginia, and to you as well, my friend. Thank you for joining. A big thanks to all of y'all guys for joining and stopping by. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, so I got my two pans clean. Give me a second, I gotta figure out where I am. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna need... We're going to need our whole tomatoes and then onions. Okay, we got the onions. Now, tell me I've got garlic powder. I know I keep onion powder in this joint because I go through it so much faster than garlic. There's my garlic. Okay. Don't know what happened to us. Hmm. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's it, Matt. I just drop things. That's like if there was a job for dropping things, that's the job I get. Okay, so I got garlic powder, whole tomatoes, onions, and how many peppers? We're going four. Four jalapeno peppers. Now I've got one of them's extra large, so I think I'll probably hmm gotta figure what's that gonna look like in the pan. Sometimes I like to just figure what the mass of something is going to be because sometimes it's hard to get a good measurement. So if I look at the space in the pan and then I look at how much space the peppers themselves actually take up in that pan, I can kind of get a pretty good idea. Oh, I did not mean to be flipping you all off just then. I can kind of get a pretty good idea on how, how many peppers I'm going to have in there. So I kind of like that. I like mine a little bit spicier. What do y'all guys think? Yeah. 
So that's going to be good. Let's see. Uh, hey, Jamie says, use the large one. I'm uh, Anita says, I'm making a layered dinner now for when my son gets home. Homemade tortillas, sweet and spicy fajita, chicken and tomato and onion salad. Nothing like the good burger, though. Oh, no, I'm coming to your place. That sounds so good. Dang. Your son's a lucky kid. Okay. So I'm just going to start out with the tomatoes. And yes, I do have... Hang on. Ah, there we go. I have a can opener in here somewhere. And my buddy Jimmy from Florida sent me the coolest little can openers in the world. They're about yay big, uh, rectangular, and they have one little barb that comes out of them that folds back and forth like a blade, and then they have a hook on them. And so you put that on the can, and that blade sticks down in it, and you just turn the can as you're doing this with the, the little blade, and it'll cut that thing right open. It's really cool. I actually wear one on my adventurer's coat. But tonight, I'm just going to use the old-fashioned knife here. All right. Now... Been doing this since I was probably honestly nine years old. Learned how from somebody that had been doing it his whole life, and I've had a lot of practice at it. So I'm going to say don't try this at home, though we're all adults. At, well, I don't know if we're all adults out here. But if you're not an adult, don't do anything dangerous without the supervision of your parents. That's all I can say. And definitely don't do anything you see me do uh, ever. I'm playing with you guys. Uh, so the important thing when opening a can with a knife is the blade faces out. It faces away from us. Then what we want to do is put our hand on it very firm with a bit of the blade sticking out of the top. Now, once we've got that, choke up on it a little bit. So that the blade now is about the same distance below your hand. So see, I got oh, about an inch there or so that my hand is over it. Now we want to stay very tight on the entire knife and our arm. Nothing should flex here. We want everything to be very strong, very firm. We've just become a machine. So then get that lined up on your can on the edge. And then remember when, you, when we hit the can, what's gonna happen because the blade is on the edge of the can, the can's gonna have a tendency to fold like that. When the, when the pressure hits it, it could fold like that. So we kind of want to angle inward, and this takes practice to do. Gently, not hard, not thumping, real gently, we're going to tap the top of the, the hand that's on top of the knife, slightly increasing the pressure until the blade goes through about that far. And then stop. See it without leaking anywhere. There we go. One nice little cut. Then right behind that, with the blade facing out, and about that far away from the cut, about the same distance that the cut is thick, we position the blade. Now, again, that time, keep smacking it until the front of the blade, the cutting side, cuts into the last stab. Then you have a much longer stab and it's all uniform. I never get in a rush. I've done it long enough. I can do it fast. So I wouldn't suggest starting out that way. Everything takes practice. So we just rinse and repeat over and over again. Sometimes if the bang stops a bit before it cuts through, you can grab the can firmly with your arms, still like a machine, tilt the blade backwards slightly. It will finish the cut. That's good enough for me. Now, what I, I do, I use, and what my dad always did, I use whole peeled tomatoes. 
You can use diced tomatoes. They work just as fine. Sauteed tomatoes. I even did this with a can of Rotel once. So basically, it does help to have the, the whole tomatoes. There's something about the, uh, the consistency or something. I chop them once they get in the pan anyway. So if diced is all you have, diced works just fine. Okay, I'm going to turn the, the stove on three here. Now, my stove is a little bit funky. It has a personality of its own, so I have to keep adjusting the temperature. Now, if I had AI, uh, yeah, when I put a can in the trash, if I haven't totally taken the lid off, I bend it backwards. Now, for people, this isn't, this isn't very safe, right? So if I throw this in the trash can, it's easy to grab that or the trash bag. It's easy to grab that trash bag and there's something sharp in there and I wind up cutting myself. Well, I should know, not to shoot on myself, I do know that there are sharp things in trash bags and I shouldn't just grab them anyway. So the reason that I do this, if I haven't cut the lid all the way off, instead of tucking it in, is because at the dump, there are animals that will go and, and eat the garbage and stuff. And so they smell the food inside here. And if that lid is placed downward and they stick their tongue or something, in there that lid will spring back and grab it uh so i always am sure to tuck them either out or cut them completely off i gotta tie my shoe my boot boy it scares me to death having y'all cl that close to the sink i'll tell you <laughs> Oh, I didn't saute the peppers first. Dang. Normally I, hmm, okay. Let's see what to do then. Okay, it won't matter. I'm going to cook it down enough that it's all right. Normally what I would do is I'd cut the peppers first and then put them in the pan and let them kind of blanch. That heat's going to help release those oils a little bit faster and the tomatoes are going to pick it up a little bit quicker. Being that I'm going to reduce the entire thing together instead of reducing the tomatoes first and then adding the peppers, I think it'll be fine and it'll go ahead and release most of that in the reduction. So I'm just going to take and cut the peppers into small pieces about this thick. That is really weird. Look at this, guys. See the tip of that pepper? It's like a bell pepper. It's like three seeds or something grew together with each other. It's not just the weirdest thing in the world. Huh. All right, so I'm just gonna cut them into thin slices and I like the seeds. I always keep the seeds. The seeds add a little bit extra kick to it. And somebody was telling me that there's actually more oil in the seeds than in the pepper. So it'll release not only that flavor, but it'll also release the uh, the heat as well. Oh goodness, that smells so good. I wish you could smell it. Wow. Oh, it smells super fresh. Oh my goodness. Throw the stem part away. And then what I'll do, once I've got them cut, oh, that's weird, my whole screen just went red. Huh, it looks like I'm wearing my shades or something. Is it red to y'all guys? You are still breaking up, Matt. Merry Christmas. Thank you, John. Merry Christmas. I am I breaking up? No, but yeah. Jamie says screen is red. Is it better now, guys? Hi from Florida, Matt. My husband and I enjoy your adventures. Never give up, never surrender. Thank you, Florida. You too, my friend. You and your husband too. All right. Uh, yes, and yes, it's still breaking up. Okay. I might have to stop and restart, guys. All right, not red anymore. Just went back to normal. Okay, it's fine. Better now. You look normal now and save red. Okay, cool, guys. Very cool. Thank you so much. <laughs>
it's so neat. It is like y'all guys are just right here in the kitchen with me. It is so cool. It, it'd be even neater if there was some way to, to where like this would speak or something. I wouldn't have to read. But then it, I think it'd almost feel schizophrenic. There'd be all of y'all guys talking all at once, you know. You look normal now. Thank you. Okay. Very not cool. Okay, guys, we'll get back on it then. I cut them into slices about like yay. And then I'm just going to split them one more time in half. Oh, I forgot what I did last time. Hang on. I got a better way to do this. After like 15 years of doing it, I figured this out the last time I was doing it. Get these sliced. Hang on. I got I'm obsessive when it comes to certain things. Okay, so lose the... We're going to chop the stem. Lose the stem. Slice it once down the middle. Long ways, like this. Holding it firmly, then cutting the slices. A really sharp knife helps. This is my really sharp knife. So, way. Man, that smells good. Okay. So I'm cutting it along. Now I'm going to slice it. I don't know, about quarter inch slices, I guess, as I look at them, is about what I do. And if you slice them a little bit thinner, you know, they'll break up faster and everything. But then if you're sharing it with somebody else that doesn't like to have the pepper with each bite, uh, it makes it more difficult for them. My dad was like that. He didn't like to actually eat the peppers. He just liked the flavor that they were cooked in. So he cut them a little bit larger to make them easier to pick out. So if you're having guests or preparing it for somebody else, it might be advantageous to ask them what they like. Okay, so I'm adding that to the sauce. Yum. Oh my goodness. All right. And I'm going to move this to the other burner over here, actually, because I'm going to want to do the, the uh, burgers over here. Now we're going to do an onion. For these sharp knives like these, I have to watch myself also because they're incredibly sharp. So and it looks very much the same front and back. So like when I'm cutting, I need to be exactly sure that the sharp end is facing forward because like if I put my thumb on there and cut and it's the sharp end facing me, it could be really bad. So turn this off, turn that on. I'm going with four on this one because that burner is a little bit smaller. I learned something working at a pizza place about cutting onions. To, in order to lose, to not lose that outer piece, the outer layer, what I can do is I cut first on the very outside all the way through the onion like that. Then turn the onion and I cut through it. But once I get down to the bottom there before it actually cuts all the way through, while it's on the plate, I'll take the onion and break that last part like so so that it's not cut all the way through and it breaks and you get this when it looks like that it's really easy to just grab oh, it's supposed to be really easy oh this there we go and peel that outer brown out without losing any of the actual onion And again, I'm going to look at how much onion do I want in here because I'm going to need an onion for my burger anyway. So I'm kind of looking at how, how, how much room would that onion take up in that pan, kind of, and how much room are the peppers and the tomatoes taking up. And looking at it, I'm thinking, I use most of this onion probably. I don't want all of it, maybe, because it's a lot of onion. So since I'm going to make my hamburger, I want onion on my hamburger, I'm going to cut my slice of hamburger out, onion out of this and then put the rest in. 
in order to do that because I want a thicker slice. And I've cut myself worse cutting onions than I've ever cut myself before. So I always say when, cut, when cutting onions to really watch out, they're very slippery uh, and accidents do happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one quarter of the onion long ways off. Then I'm going to try and cut a slice out of the middle. There we go. And there's my hamburger onion. Thicker, so I'm cutting it out of the middle. Just going to put that on a paper towel over here in the staging area. Hang on a second, guys. Give me one moment. Okay. I thought I heard something. Okay, and this is pretty simple. I'm just going to cut it down the center. Now I've cut it in half. So we've got this flat edge that makes it safer. Cut it in half, put the flat edge against the plate. Then I just cut it once down the middle. Then I'll cut it one more, turn it, and cut it one more time down the middle. Now I get these large, large pieces that I like. Kind of like that. I always break them up as I'm putting them in the pan. Oh, it's a good onion. Oh my goodness. Eyes are watering. It always seems to look like way more onion than I thought it was going to also. One of those cases where less is more, I guess, you know. Okay. Stack in half. Once down the middle, turn it. Once more down the middle. Good to go. Oh yeah, that's a lot. Tell you what, we're gonna save this too. I like extra onion with my hamburger. Okay. Oh. So you gotta go with uh, that's my garlic powder. Honestly, I never know how much salt to use. I'd rather use too little at first and then taste it as I'm cooking and add more salt because a lot like uh, cutting a board, right? Measure twice, cut once. We can, if we cut the board too short, we can't add more board to it. But if we cut the board too long, we can just cut more off of it. That's how I am with my salt. So I'll take, yeah, I'm going to have to sweep later. Uh, I don't know. That's about right. See, about, about that much. Just a little, that's probably maybe a teaspoon. I'm just Generously throw that in there. And then some garlic powder. Normally I would get garlic and the garlic, I like to cut them into slices about yay big. That way every now and then you actually get just a little piece of garlic when you're dipping and it has that real garlic kick. My dad liked to cut his real thin. He'd cut his so thin, actually, that by the time the sauce had reduced down a couple of times, they had pretty much worn away to nothing and turned into liquid, which I will say is awesome. And I talked about it in a live video earlier. Yes, he got it from the movie Goodfellas, uh, from that one scene. So with this, I'm, I'm going to treat it kind of like salt. I'm going to give it a generous amount. I'm not going to give it too much, though, I don't think. And have I forgotten anything? No. All right, we've got tomatoes, onions, peppers, garlic. So we're good to go here. I'm just going to kind of mix them all together. And this burner isn't very hot, so I'm going to turn it up to about six. Where otherwise, we're going to be here all night for me and all day for some of y'all guys. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me. This is so neat. All right, so I'm just mixing it. I'll let it heat real good before I even cut the tomatoes up.
And don't worry if it looks a little overfilled. As this cooks and starts to reduce down those onions, which are taking out most of the room, are going to get real soft and smushy. And they're just going to gonna flatten right out. Everything will mix together. It's going to be real good. Okay. Would burn my face off. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hi, Matt. I can translate. Mm. Take your time, brother. Okay, Matthew. Thank you, bro. Matt, do you have a favorite movie? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'd have to almost say no because there are so many movies that I like a lot. Honestly, uh, I like a lot of the old action movies. Big t Die Hard guy, uh, Lethal Weapon, oh, that movie Deep Blue Sea. I've watched that a zillion times with my dad. I didn't, so, no, I don't guess I have a, well, okay, I lie. I guess if I were going to pick a favorite movie, I would have to say Mad Max Beyond Their Dome. I grew up with it. In a lot of ways, I grew up into it. Uh, yeah, I would say probably Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, honestly. And then after that, uh, maybe James Bond. But they've made so many of them, it's, yeah, no, Thunderdome, Beyond Thunderdome. I get a real inspiration out of a quote from that movie, actually. Tina Turner, um, when we first meet her in the movie, she says, before the end of the world, I'm paraphrasing because she doesn't even, yeah, you, anyway. She says, before the end, I was nothing. After, I was still alive. And in a lot of ways, that resonates with me. I, and it, I think it really reduces all of the everything in the world down to the very basics. And it also shows how somebody who could think of themselves as nothing could achieve so much in the right situations and scenarios. You know, here's to Tina Turner. I didn't get to do a IG tribute to her, but I'm going to do a, a tribute on one of my next, like, Road Wanderers, uh, I think, one of my next trips up there. Yeah, it's the onions getting to me, guys. It's just the onions. <laughs> okay, now what am I doing? Please forgive me. I have to blow my nose. <laughs> I was trying to think of a sneaky way to do that, but it just, yeah, sometimes, you know. <laughs> hey, where are we, guys? Uh, let's see. That looks good. I'm going to try and make it cool, very cool. Do you watch your old videos and reflect? I do sometimes, actually. Sometimes I'll go back and because people will bring them up or something uh, and it will remind me. And I find it's really very healthy to be able to reflect. I find that I've grown so much only in just the past couple of years in comparison to where I was a couple of years ago. So I like to do that. The most healing I get from my videos, though, if something's going on, I will record it no matter what. So like if I'm in a mood or if there's something happening or something like that, I'll record it. And then in the watching it back later, like in the edit or something, it really helps me to break down those feelings I was going through then and the mindset I had because of those feelings. And then think about how my mindset changed later once those about the same situation once i was feeling differently it's very healthy for me i actually would recommend that anybody going through something especially if it's like if it's rough do like a video diary where nobody else ever has to see it but we talk to like maybe the recorder on our phone about how we feel bent frustrated, angry, sad, cry, whatever the emotion is, being honest with the camera. And then later, after that emotion has gone away and situations have changed, we get to watch it back. 
Now, sometimes that can come with the feeling of, oh, like, oh, for instance, me, right? I might think to myself, what a baby, what a crybaby, what a loser, why, come on, grow up, or whatever that is, right? That little negative voice inside might not like to watch back my not so most proud moments. I fight that little voice off by realizing the truth of the reflection and that by subjecting myself to that reflection, I'm able to change those behaviors or embrace them. Sometimes I'm, and I'm like, well, yeah, I was justified to feel that way, you know? And then I can also back myself up. I can be like, well, you know, I wasn't a jerk to anybody, even though I wasn't feeling good. It's, it's really a very therapeutic kind of approach for me in life and struggling situations. Actually, something I'm going to add to my book, which I really want to get done here pretty soon. So I need to get my house fixed. I need to get the, the food and my time schedules and everything down so that I can really devote to getting some completion on stuff going. I'm talking about the Neanderthal project for almost three years. And I've got most of the stuff I need to actually do it. I just need to get stable in everything and then do these things really. Y'all guys help, especially now with like this kind of interaction. It really helps push me. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, I really wish you could smell it. Oh, man. Whoa. I know I'm not bringing it over there so you can smell it. I haven't completely lost my mind. But look at that. Oh, can you just imagine how it smells? The green of the peppers and the... The pungence of the onion coming up through the, the tomatoes. Oh, it's so good. Even that garlic, even though it's powder, it's starting to kind of really blend in there. And I'm starting to get some bubbling going on too. So I'm going to turn this down. We really want a simmer at first. Now, if we're in a rush and we just want to make a rush batch or something, I would recommend kind of boil it like this. Do it like a tomato sauce first couple reductions and it's going to cause everything to break down a lot faster when i'm cooking it at home like this and i don't mind taking a little bit longer i really just want a nice simmer especially at first because that's really letting out all of that taste and all of that aroma and what we're going to do now is start the burger oh yeah that's so all right so just want to get that Pepper off of my plate. I'm trying to remember not to touch my eyes, you know. You are right about those pans. Hey, right on. Yes, you like them too? House looks nice and clean. Thanks, friend. Wait till you see it here pretty soon. It's going to shine. What is cooking? We got hot sauce cooking right now, my friend. I... Uh, don't worry about it, Matt. You do you. Thank you, friend. Do you add any vinegar to it? No, actually. I, I add vinegar to like my uh, barbecue sauce, but I never thought about trying it with hot sauce. Maybe I'll try it in the next batch if that's not bad. If y'all guys, if you enjoy it, that's a cool tip. I uh, go Bill's. Bill's. Mafia forever, I <laughs> Hey. Oh, how could you? Oh, oh, oh. Gotta give a thumbs up. Thanks, Baz. As we know, you are doing amazing on all your topics as well as helping people out. Pat, pat on your back. My friend, God bless you. God bless you too, my friend. Dad's hot sauce is the best. Yep, yep. Uh, Merry Christmas from Buffalo, New York. Love your videos. They get me through a lot. Hey, thank you, Stefan, my friend. Thank you so much. You help get me through a lot. All of y'all do. How am I start getting this stuff done? The hot sauce still needs to be turned down a little bit. Okay, give me just a moment, guys. I got to grab my stuff. Okay, we got this. And then, oh, yeah, I definitely want some Dr. Pepper. Cheese. Oh, I don't know. Should I throw an egg on there? 
Yeah, I might throw an egg on there. Okay, got my cheese. Dr. Pepper just for me right now. Now, I realized before I started this, because I try and think ahead. I, I get into less jams in life if I'm able to kind of think ahead. Just a couple steps ahead, not 10 or 8, just two or three. I try and keep it simple, right? So I ask myself, well, you open up your tube of hamburger, and normally what I do is put in individual bags, two patties, maybe two a bag, and then I freeze it. That way, while I'm having hamburgers, I just go in, I get my pre-made patties, and I'm good to go. Well, I didn't get any bags yesterday, any freezer bags, and I don't have really hardly anything around here that would substitute. If I do, definitely not enough of them. So I asked myself, well, what are you going to do, Matt? Because if I open it, put it back in the fridge, it could easily go bad. I have stuff go bad around here like that all the time if I don't freeze it. Uh, so I came up with this idea where we use one bag for all of the patties because one bag is all I have. And it's not even a, a real bag. It's a produce bag. So I'm going to start doing this, and then as it's time to put the hamburger up, we'll, I'll show you my plan for bagging all of these into individual patties in one freezer bag, which isn't even a freezer bag. I like me and will find my way around things. Too many times in life I've hit dead ends and not ever been able to do anything with it because I wasn't able to look objectively at the situation and find some sort of way around it. So nowadays, whenever I can, I like to share it and I like to emphasize it with myself as an achievement because in life, we get build better and better feelings about ourselves as we achieve our goals, as we achieve positive things throughout our life. And so little goals are really easy for building up our own personal aspirations and the way that we feel about ourselves. So whenever I make a little goal or a big goal, but mainly little goals, I make a little goal come through. I try and sit back and kind of revel in it for a minute. All right. So I'm just going to do the, the padding here. This is bachelor style, basically for one guy. Uh, if I were cooking for two or more, I'd want to have an actual real size pan that I can do it all in all at once and probably be cooking, like doing the buns and stuff in the separate pan kind of at the same time. Being this just, well, it's us tonight, but I'm going to be the only one eating. I'm sorry. I know how rude. I'm just going to do it like I normally do it when it's just me. So I'm going to heat the pan first because I just washed it and it needs to be seasoned. This is the moment. So I'm just going to crank that burner up good. Let's see. I got the buns. I got tomatoes. I got some really great tomatoes, too. Even though I was pushed for time, I made sure that I got, like, they're perfectly ripe. The color is good. You can feel they've got, they're firm, but they've still got that juice in there. It's going to be a good tomato right there. Nope, don't want to get too hot. Let's sit over here. Come on, heat, heat, heat. Okay, the sauce is at just about the right temperature. I've got little bubbles coming up through it. It's kind of talking. You can hear that little bubbling sound, but it's not bubbling a whole lot. So I'm just gonna kind of turn it, try and get those onions and those peppers to sink down underneath the tomato sauce. That way they're gonna transfer all those flavors. A little bit easier and then i'm going to cut the tomatoes in half now that they've heated up a little bit because those those tomatoes they also hold a lot of their own tomato sauce so the cutting them the first time like this I want that sauce to come out and mingle with the flavors of the pepper, the garlic, and the onions. 
And this might be a longer video, guys, too. So if some of you can't stick around, I totally understand. I'm going to do this video again uh, with just my GoPro and release it as a cooking video. This is so cool. I was looking, had been looking forward to it all day long. Now, I just, it's the reason I was trying to get things nice before I got on here. A, a fried egg. Yes, that's what I would. Is the best. Okay, we're, yes, I'm with you. We're going to have a fried egg tonight. Yeah, totally. Good night to you, Stefan. Good night, Stefan. Uh, 178 watching only one to one that don't add up. Don't forget the thumbs up. Thanks, my friend. Would you have any plastic wrap available? Just cover the patties around them and few times and then freeze them. That's. Not a bad idea. Get more. I don't know. I think I only have tin foil. That's empty. See, that's what I'm dealing with around here. I've got empty stuff that I've just been putting back in the shelf. Uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. So I'm trying to get all that stuff taken out. Now, this stuff I do like because the roll inside there, there's all kinds of stuff I can do with a cardboard roll. And sometimes, oh no, see, this one's so cheap, it doesn't even have the blade on. I will pull those little blades off of the tinfoil sometimes, because you can also use those for stuff. Okay, get rid of that hat. Actually, I'll put this over here. Mm. Now I've got tinfoil, but I hate to use tinfoil for it. Hang on, what is this? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. That's an excellent idea. I got these uh these baking sheets for cookies. Oh, well, I don't want to use all of those either. Let's see how this other experiment I have going works. And if that doesn't work, then we'll use these. That's a genius idea, though, friend. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Okay, that pan is... Okay, pan's about right. I like it to get almost scary hot before I season it again. And again, all I do is once it's really, really hot. I'm so glad to know that this nerve is okay and that I can use it. So like when it hurts or something, before I babied it and everything, now I know though that I can, boom, push through it and, and it'll just go away and everything's okay. It's just so wonderful to have that peace of mind again, you know? All I'm going to do, I'm going to put maybe a tablespoon or so worth of oil in there. And paper towel. Just swishing around. I remember, hot. And just wipe that around with the paper towel real good. And typically, I'll let it cool, but since I'm in a hurry and everything, and I'm not going to cook a lot with it before I, I wash it again, I'm just going to, we're going to keep going with this. We're going to get those patties on now. So, let's see what to do. Well, honestly, I want to do this right. I'm really sorry, guys. I should have used the restroom beforehand, and I don't want to be rude or anything. If you would please excuse me for just like two or three minutes, I'll be right back. I, once again, I really apologize. But while the pan is cooling, it gives me the perfect opportunity to step away for just a moment. I'll be right back. Thank you, guys.
I'm back. So a little production tip. Uh, though I washed my hands in the bathroom, if you ever are doing a cooking show and you mention having to use the restroom, be sure that you wash your hands in front of everyone. Ah, as Fonzie Bear would say. Wait, no, Fonzie Bear said, aha. I know, right, guys? Uh, would you have any plastic wrap? Oh, it's all paused. Hang on. It's another thing. I've got hand towels and stuff, but I need to do laundry. I've got so it's going to be our next video, probably. We'll head into Tenasca Laundry Mat and wash everything. Try and get this. There we go. I'm caught up with y'all. Wait. There we go. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. How come uh, Michigan, Susie Poss. Hi, Susie. N Niceville, Florida. Hey, Mickey. Cool. Florida. Always want to go. I got a buddy down in Florida. That is a weird pepper. I know, right? I still can't get over it. And when I cut it, it kind of had, it smelled more like a poblano pepper than a jalapeno. Makes me wonder if maybe somehow it got cross-pollinated or something. I don't know. Screen is blue. All right, hang on. I've got this light I use for a stage light. Let me see if that might be doing it. Maybe bring it in here. Oh, yeah, I think that's, I think somehow y'all are picking up a bad glare. I like this because that lighting, it makes the rest of the colors around it kind of bounce a little bit or pop out. Is that, that looks okay, I think, from my angle. If it bugs y'all guys, let me know and I'll just turn it off. But I do like it kind of. I, I feel it adds that touch of color to the video. Okay, pan's good to go. So now we we let it heat again. <laughs> we can start with the uh, with the meat now. Once again, checking the side of that knife. I've done that before though. I have had so many knife mix-ups in my life. Actually, the first bad experience I had with cutting myself really bad due to an accident with a knife, I was maybe seven. Yeah, I think maybe seven or eight. We were living on this boat out in the middle of nowhere, and my parents were cutting spam into slices and then making sandwiches out of them. And I was a conscientious little whippersnapper, so I saw that the knife was dirty, and I wanted to clean the knife. I got a piece of rag, and I went and I went to wipe the stuff off of the knife, but I didn't realize and my finger was pushed on the top of the knife. So what happened is I wound up cutting my finger. And I, boy, it sticks out of my mind so bad even today. I mean, it was super traumatic. I'll never forget. Now, it always made me very cautious, though, and aware of the what I'm doing, basically, what tool I'm using and what can go wrong with it. I think my life kind of in many ways has taught me to watch out very strongly for the things that can go wrong, which also in my recovery life, I've had to kind of come back because I find myself, I don't know, sometimes a little bit more leery than I was when I was younger. And I don't want my awareness of the way that things can go in life to stifle my desire for things in life, if that makes sense. So I always try and keep things just present in my mind, really. Now, before I muck up my hands, I want to get my seasonings out. So I don't really put garlic on my hamburgers. I just like onion. And what I do, because I'm, I'm going to muck up my hands real good, now I won't be washing in between. What I'll do is I just take the caps off. Some of this stuff I know, it's either lazy or it's, whatever you know that as one guy i just kind of do you know it's like the joker said i i just do that's how i'm playing guys i'm playing I'm halfway so okay i got this 
Where's, I got some pepper. That pepper shaker is gonna be hard. To, I'm trying to think ahead, right? So that pepper shaker is gonna be hard to use while my hands have meat all over them. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the cap and grind out some pepper into that. Okay, now I can just dump that on the meat. Where's my salt shaker? And that's really all I do with my hamburgers. Now, having the fresh onion and everything, sometimes, or if I had a bell pepper maybe, I might chop that onion into small pieces like this along with the bell pepper and then mix that in with the meat. Kind of like doing a, a uh, what do you call it? Like doing a meatloaf, kind of, is what I'm thinking. Okay. Oh, and... Because my hands will be yucky, I keep a paper towel ready so that I can handle the stuff. I'm just going to get out. A good. Oh, that's good meat there. I hate it when you get that junk that it's got. It's not red. It's got like that already dingy look to it. Yeah, but that's good meat right there. It doesn't look as good to y'all guys, I don't think, as it does right now in real life. So I'm just going to guesstimate I'm starving, so it's about right for me. This feels about what I'm into tonight. Now, my idea for freezing these is I'm going to take this single bag here, open, and I'm just going to go ahead and make the same kind of like balls out of it, about the same size, and I'm going to put them into the bag, and by making them round, what should happen is there, it's going to rele reduce the surface area on each patty. So what I'm saying is that I'll do this. If I made flat patties and I put them in there, then when they freeze, they're going to have a lot of the surface of one patty touching the other patty. And that's basically going to make one chunk of meat. By making them into bowls first, then when I put them into that bag, a lot less area is going to be touching on each one. So even if there's an R1 here and R1 here and R1 here, they're only connected by that much frozen together. So when I tap them, the frozen meat should just break apart. If not, I'll take a knife, put down between them like I was opening the can, go boom, and it'll knock them right apart. In theory, I'll let you know how this goes. I haven't done this before. Once I took and I had a, a trash bag, so I cut the trash bag flat and square, right? And then I'd take and make the patty and lay it on the trash bag and then fold the trash bag. Then lay the patties on that, then fold it back. Kind of like a, an accordion, kind of back and forth and then layering those patties one onto the other. But I think this is going to work. The main thing is that it will allow me to conserve my food and not waste any of it. Well, that's going to be a big burger right there. Yeah. And tomorrow I'll have all the dishes done. That'll feel nice. Okay, the pan's getting there. Let's try and speed this up. Yep, I have to move that for a second. I'm moving too slow, guys. I hope you guys are having a nice Christmas season so far. It's really been kind of cool here. Not much snow. It's definitely an El, an El Nino year, as they say. I'm hoping it'll snow, though, in the next few days. It's been nice, though. I mean, honestly, I, I'll i take this, especially with my tires like they are right now. 
trying to save up enough money that I can afford a new set. And if I can, being that these aren't worn out, these are still good, at, uh, like summertime adventure tires, then I can stack those around the side of the house, put my wear tires on, and I'll have a set to swap back and forth in. Right now, I'm really just trying to find ways to get ahead. It feels like over the past couple of years, though I've gained a little bit, I haven't really been getting ahead as much as just keeping from falling behind. Now, that doesn't go with inside and psychologically and everything. In those areas, I feel I have grown immensely. Okay, now I want, I'm trying to not push them down on each other, so it's just a loose bag. I'm going to twist the top once and then freeze it. I'm going to throw this in the freezer real quick. Oh, there's not much. Oh, I love that. There's not much room in here. Nice. Ha-ha. Okay. So, yeah. Deuce 2, I used to do all kinds of tricks. I've tried it all. Really good friend of mine showed me how to do smash burgers. It was awesome. It's probably one of the best times of my life. Uh, and so, what I do is I simply make a basic patty. Just smush it together. The more we work the meat, the more tough the uh, the meat, the patty will be in the end because it causes all of those meat fibers to bind to each other very strongly. Like if we just mix it and mix it and mix it. So I try and mix it as little as possible. It's another way that people fail on a meatloaf is they'll over mix the meatloaf together. So anytime that we're working with, with ground beef, I like to remember not to over mix the meat. Then what I'll do is I just push through the center and make it almost paper thin. Like even if it winds up like a donut, that's fine because that meat is going to expand as it cooks and it's going to close that up anyway. So I just got the center very thin and then the outer sides about the size I want the pay to be. Some onion. Come on, Matt. Pepper. Oh, you normally only pepper one side. Salt. I'm very, very generous with my salt, as you guys can tell. Oh, who is that? You said, what was that? Uh, oh, right. Emerald Lagasse was always like, bang. Remember? No, bam. It was bam. Yeah, it was like, bam. Actually, funny story. I used to watch Emerald Lagasse a lot. And so I, I, since I was a kid, I've been able to make eggs. Eggs are like my specialty. I can pretty much cook any kind of egg. And you know, I don't like to to like really boast about stuff that I'm not super confident in. My eggs, I'm very confident in. Like I started when I was very young. And then I was like, I don't know, 14, 15 or so. I was watching Emerald and he taught how he poaches eggs. And so now I poach eggs like he does. When somebody has one of my poached eggs and, and they compliment it, I, I always tell them, yeah, I learned that from Emerald Lugasi. And when I say it though, it sounds like I learned it from him. I just think it's funny. I always put the disclaimer on there, but still, it's a neat story, you know. Thankfully, I remembered yesterday I get more paper towels, too. Got almost everything. Dang, boot keeps coming on tight. So what about y'all guys? What what are your favorite Christmas movies? That might be neat. Everybody want to just type in what, what your favorite Christmas movie is? And what I'm doing over here now, I'm, I'm chopping up these tomatoes really well. As you cook it, you'll notice the, the warmer the tomatoes get, the easier they are to chop. At this point, I'm chopping them into very small pieces. So it's all chopped down, basically. And I don't think we're going to have time tonight to do 
many reductions. We're probably going to just reduce it down one time. And then by the time the burgers are ready, we should be good to go. I want to get over there and read y'all guys' answers. I'm going to turn it up a little bit too now. Okay. Uh, yeah, here's to Tina right on. Hoorah. There is only ever one Tina Turner. Uh, it's a wonderful life right on. Okay, yes. I live in North Arkansas in Oklahoma visiting family. Totally cool, San. Bad Santa, right on. Yep, I like Bad Santa. Uh, yes, here, right. Yep, to Tina. Always you yourself. Thank you, my friend. We want to be. Elf, love Elf, okay. Uh, Chevy Chase, yep, for sure on my list. Another Chevy Chase, right on, guys, right on. Home Alone, Charlie Brown, Christmas, and so much more. Right? I remember, uh, uh, what is it? Frosty the Snowman also. Uh, Home Alone, Miracle on, I, Miracle on 34th Street. Yes. Such a good movie. I love that in the end, too, when, when she, she wanted a baby brother. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to keep up with y'all guys. Uh, Matt seems like he would be the person I could hang with every day. Such a mellow guy, very kind and friendly. Thank you, Wendy. Christmas with the Cranks. Watched it a thousand times. Totally cool. We got Home Alone again. It's a wonderful life. Yeah, yeah. Try Worcestershire sauce with the burger. I actually love Worcestershire sauce with the hamburger. I've got my, I actually left it up on the mountain the last time I went. So I need to get some for down here in the valley. Bear with me, guys. I got to turn this. That's a thick burger. Yeah, if it does start thickening up like that, too, I just smush it is all I do. Night before Christmas, right on Polar Express, Polar Express, Frosty and Rudolph. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Prancer. I don't know if I've seen Prancer. I have to watch that. From O'Fallon M O. Love your videos, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Hoorah, my friend. We got Rudolph of the Wooden Soldiers. Totally cool. I have to check that out. The original Frosty the Snowman. Me too. Right on. So glad I made it to your live. I always miss it. Hey, it's so good that you made it. I'm glad that you're here, my friend. Hey, Todd from New Hampshire. Deck the Halls. Yes, very good movie. Uh, Mike, my graves fan. Family lives in off Okay, they're talking to each other. Very cool. I love that, guys. Community is so neat. I'm cuddled up with my cats watching you, Matt. Totally cool, my friend. National Lampoons. Yeah, yeah. Bush family Christmas. <laughs> totally cool, my friend. Uh, okay, if y'all guys don't mind, I need to step over here for a minute and grab my ibuprofen. I'll be right back. That's the one thing I didn't get yesterday. I got to make a run down to Jerry's anyway, down to the quick stop here pretty soon. Embarrassed. Yeah, let's go two. Save two for later. I've been able to cut down on them, honestly. I used to have to take a lot of them. Now that I'm getting a little bit older, I'm trying to re reduce the stuff that's going into my system. 
Last year, though, I went to the doctor and I had like a full checkup. I mean, everything, you know, all those things that a person might worry about, even down to my kidneys and stuff, uh, and found out that I'm actually in pretty good shape. Or as the gentleman I work for says, sometimes they'll go, yeah, Matt, you're in pretty good shape for the shape you're in. And I really think that's kind of neat, you know, because, yeah, for the shape I'm in. But no, that's once I see I was really worried getting all this stuff checked up and everything. And then once I found out that I'm actually okay at all, it really added to my desire to take better care of myself, I guess, you know, which which in a large part means cutting down on stuff like ibuprofen, not cutting it out because I don't think suffering is cool either, but cutting down and everything. So I, I'll try and see if it's a headache that maybe eye strain or or maybe I've twisted my neck wrong and maybe a hot shower will fix it before I actually resort to taking something for it, you know. I'm just glad that we don't live in the 1700s. I mean, before we actually had stuff, you know, back in the day when they were bleeding people and giving you lead. I mean, it's like, hey, let's grab some leeches, a little bit of lead, fix you right up. Well, some of these, see, these meds I see, though, remind me of those days. Don't get me started on that, though. Some of these commercials just, oh, my goodness. I don't know if it's like that everywhere out there. Oh, that's hot. Oh, anyway. Now, with my burger, too, sometimes, hang on. I always use a burger with a high fat ratio. I don't really like lean. And I work out a lot. I have an active life, so I burn it off really quickly. So once it gets to this point where there's a lot of that grease in there, and these are my, I reuse my coffee buckets and stuff for old grease containers. So I'll just take real quick and I'll pour some of that grease off of there. That helps it also kind of like crisp up the sides. And it's burning some of that fat and stuff out. You know, it's like George Foreman's grill was designed to burn lots of that fat and stuff, the artery clogging grease out of his meat and stuff. So I kind of try and not let it sit too long in that stuff. Plus, like I said, you get a lot crisper patty if you pour that out and just kind of like go again on it. Now, if y'all feel up to join me while I eat, after this is all finished and I've eaten, the sauce will probably be ready by then. I've turned it up. We've got a really good rolling simmer going on over here. I'm just kind of like a kind of like a salad or a spaghetti. You know, when you mix the sauce into spaghetti, we don't really stir. We turn it, right? Putting the bottom onto the top, and that makes the top go down to the bottom. It's kind of why I do it my sauce, is I just want to kind of turn those ingredients and let it all kind of like mingle. And at this point, hang on. Uh, at this point, I'm going to taste it. To make the, my to make sure my seasoning ratio is right. If it's really watery, when you start doing your first taste and everything, what I prefer to do is use a small piece of bread because that bread will pick up enough of the sauce that it helps the palate in your mouth uh, really detect that taste. Because if it's watery, then that the sauce, the flavor will just kind of like drip off of the chip and you really only get that juice on there if that makes sense being that it's thickened up already and i'm not really going to do another reduction or any reduction this go around i'm just going to use a chip and see what it's like so far see yeah there you go that's what i'm talking about that's a good uh you can't really see it it's a good consistency though see the if you can see the way it's kind of sticking to that chip nicely
Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That's not bad. I'm gonna want though a little well I'll, hang on. Excellent first. Heck, I don't know if the finish isn't salty enough though. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with it. I think this is about right. Whenever I taste something like that, I try to remember that the experience of the palate is I'm gonna have a first impression of the taste. Then as it's in my mouth, my taste buds are going to get used to it, which will give me a second impression. And then as the flavor starts to linger, that's going to be like the finish of the flavor. And so I try and detect that saltiness because like the salt will linger longer, kind of, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you might can tell I've spent a lot of time on my own, guys. All right, Patty is just about there. So... Yep, time for a new roll of paper towels. What I do to absorb the extra oil and grease, I just always use a paper towel. Lay my burger on there. See, I got, and I don't think you can see it very well. I've got to get my GoPro hooked up in replacement of this camera because I think it would be a lot better. Like the quality will be better. So that's not too hot. See, we've got... This real good dark, kind of like crisp on the outside, but it's thick enough that it's still juicy. Mmm. Very juicy. Very nice. Okay. Now, all I have left to do are the buns. So I'm going to get this out of the way first. We're going to want cheese. Before I do the buns, I get everything set aside. Now, I want this burger to stay warm. So I'm just going to fold the paper towel over the top, hold it down, and that'll hold in some of the heat at least. Okay, these shoelaces are going to wind up. Okay, there. Yes, normally if I tied my shoe, I'd wash my hands afterwards if I was cooking for other people, but I don't care. <laughs> oh, I try and get all my stuff out ahead of time. That way, once the burger is done, I can go straight to eating. It hasn't cooled off or anything. So I get all my stuff together. I got my cheese, onion, beautiful tomato. I like my tomato kind of a little bit thicker. And I don't like to be wasteful, but I don't like the skin of the tomato as much as I want just the tomato. So my first cut, that's why I tried to get the, it's kind of oblong. So like the entire tomato is basically the same size as the whole burger. I'm not having to stack it or anything. And since I want to have it for later too, I don't want it to go to waste. So the first cut is a throwaway for me. I'm just going to cut the as much as little off of the outside as I can. Get that about the right size for my burger. Sharp knife really helps. And then that's pretty, I don't want you to think I'm wasteful. It's, see, that's pretty much nothing but skin right there. There's not even hardly any meat on there. And so I'll throw that out for the birds later. That's, at least it doesn't go into the garbage, you know. Maybe I'll throw it into the uh, uh, garden area or something. Oh, that's, that's a good slice right there. Okay. No matter what I'm using to preserve it with, I always just remember that the main thing is so, so that the oxygen doesn't get to the exposed part. So I just always put that flat against whatever it is I'm using. Throw that in the refrigerator. Oh, the, the egg. That pan's pretty messy. I don't know if this egg's going to come out right. All right, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to go ahead and toast the buns. So I just get my burner nice and hot. I poured out a little too much oil, or I poured it out too late because the burger didn't produce much oil after that. 
And depending on, you know, a person's dietary desires as to how much oil or grease they're taking in versus how much they work out and how physical a life is, I would vary all of this. If I were uh, trying to watch my cholesterol or grease intake or something, what I would do is I'd clean this pan, put some butter in there, then I'd dip the the buns in the butter and use that for the toasting. Since I'm very active and everything, I just, I, I use the grease quite honestly. So I'm just going to dip the first one in there and get a little bit of grease on there. It doesn't have to be a lot. Set that aside. Second one, kind of just work it around the whole pan and just dry that grease out. There wasn't much in there, as you can tell, right? And just let that baby toast for a minute. Just so always my shortcoming. Whenever I'm doing something like toasting a piece of bread or a bun or something like that, for some reason I'm more prone to burn it than I am like the potatoes or the meat or the sauce or something. And so I just totally forget that I have a bun in the pan and I winds up burning. So I, I try and take note when stuff like that happens in my life for when I realize that. For some reason, there's something about some activity that is, it's not like the level I want it to be. So when I do it again, I realize that's what I'm doing. And it helps me kind of fight that, that what I'm prone to do, I guess. To go make a burger. So the last year now is making a burger because of this. Yeah. Get up, man. Get, go make a burger and hoorah. Uh, me too, yum. Matt's a cool dude. Thanks, buddy. You're cool too. Yeah. Hey, Matt, where are you going to take another trip to the cabin? Very soon, hopefully. Within the next, maybe next month. Uh, maybe like first, second week of next month. It would be really cool. I kind of need it, especially in this new mindset. You know, I'm I'm over that hill. I need to go tell the mountain about it, kind of, I'm thinking. Hey, uh, there we go. Okay, can't wait for Cabin Adventure to Adventures Top. Cool. Me too, my friend. Uh, great modifications, suggestions. Thank you. I like watching him Alaskan bush people when they went to Alaska. Well, you know, it was a heck of an adventure for me. I, I appreciate y'all guys having been there and and for being here. I mean, my world would be so much smaller without you, and you add so much to it. Oh, the button. See, right? We're still all right. We're still all right. Uh, he's he's busy. Yeah. Matt, you need your own show. Kind of got one, buddy. I <laughs> know I'm playing with you. That would be neat, but it's uh, so much work, guys. I, and in so many ways, it doesn't feel as personal as this. Uh, that's why I like being a member of the YouTube partnership program, is that they kind of have given me my own channel and and you know that we all get to be here together and and share together. I, I really dig the way that I'll come in here and y'all guys are talking to each other. You know, y'all guys, a lot of y'all guys know each other and like correspond and it's just such a beautiful and brilliant sense of community. You know, it sure has given purpose to my life and meaning to the things that I have gone through. You know, you make it worth it, guys. I have to toast my hamburger buns right on. Thank you for reminding me again. Yeah. Okay, that's about good for me on this one. And since I've already got the oil on that one, I'm going to pop it in there and we're good to go. We'll let that toast out. I do take, as my buns get finished, I'll put it in on top of the hamburger patty so that they help keep each other warm. Because we're And then the last bun, when it goes on, is when I add the cheese. That way the residual heat of the hamburger and then the instant heat of that bun will melt that cheese on there just perfectly it's really good i love that all y'all guys are out cooking hamburgers right now that's so cool oh my goodness we've been here for an hour and a half guys whoa this is gonna be a long video
That's a lot of smiley faces. How can we send you Christmas cards? If it's just a Christmas card, uh, right now you could send it on uh, general delivery. I want to someday be able to mail back to y'all guys. I have a mailing list I'm putting together. It's just there are so many of y'all that it's, I can't afford it right now. So I'm trying to get where I can mail cards and stuff back. I really appreciate y'all guys. Thank you. I don't like cheese on my burgers. Hey, that's okay. Lots of people don't. Plus, that's more cheese for me. I see. Hi, Wendy. That's so cool. Hey, Matt. Hey, Emmanuel. I love the fact that you can go live and we can communicate with you. Me too. That's it's, it's so cool. That everybody in here is just so cool. It's been fun watching. Thanks so much for the cooking show, Matt. Bargain, oh, bargain mamas. Absolutely, my friend. Thanks for being here. Hi, Matt. I finally have caught a live video. Hello from Hoer, Alan, Idaho. I'm not real good with names and stuff. Hey, Idaho. Uh, Samantha, it's good to have you here, Samantha. I know I've seen you pop up before saying that you had missed it. It's good to have you here, my friend. Hoorah. Matt, you are not just all right, you might do. Thank you, my friend. You, you're cool. Hey, Katza. Hey, Matt. Love from Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, Captain Will. Nashville is really cool. I've been through Nashville. I actually spent some time there. Went to the Grand Old Opry. And the last one's ready. Uh, I was the last person. Okay, so Celie Green the uh, country music star i watched her retiring show at the at the grand old opry actually it was really really cool got to go backstage uh this was before my show and everything it was when my family and i we were down in tennessee nashville tennessee promoting uh the book that my dad had written it was really cool got a little place out like soft fireflies Man, fireflies were so cool. I wish we had them here. Okay, so right now what I'm doing, why am I doing this? Oh, the egg, yeah. Uh, so right now I'm just washing the pan so that I can do the egg. The, after doing the bun and everything, the pan was just too dirty to be able to, uh, to fry an egg in it. I couldn't have scrambled an egg. And I just seasoned it, so I don't have to worry about that. Go on here real quick. Now, this part, I got to move on so that everything doesn't get cold. Okay, right. I am totally forgot what I'm doing. Okay, so last bun's out. Throwing the cheese on the burger. And then... The main bun, the last bun that I do goes on top of that, and I wrap it back up again. And that's going to help that cheese get nice and melty. And what's really good is that the, the, by this point, the meal has already rested. And so all of those flavors have come to their peak, basically. And by the time it's served, it's at its best. I'll tell you, my... My gut's kind of like starting to growl, too. I'm getting really hungry, guys. I got to get this egg done. Okay. Get a stir on this. Oh, yeah. Now we're cooking. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, my goodness. Boy, I hope I don't eat all of this tonight because this is definitely... I'm a, once once we've had dinner and we're done, guys, I'm I'm turning on a Christmas movie. I'm gonna sit down, veg out, dip some hot sauce, and just enjoy the rest of the night. This has been the neatest. Okay, so for my egg, I'm just gonna do I uh, I'm gonna use butter. Okay. 
Oh, also, next time that I invite y'all over for dinner, I'll be sure that in the invitation video to give y'all guys a time uh, that I'm going to be cooking so that you don't have to sit there and wonder or anything. Okay, so let that get hot for a moment. Utilize this. <clears throat> Pardon me. I use a, uh, they call this a cake knife. It's made for spreading frosting on cakes. I use it for everything. The material it's made out of is like a, uh, what would you call it? Uh, like a silicone kind of, like a food grade silicone, like the caulking for, for window seals and stuff. So it's firm. And yet it has a lot of give. It's also very heat resistant. So I use it for pretty much anything. It's almost my one tool. One spatula to rule them all. Okay, here we go. Now, okay. If, if you ever lose a piece of shell from the egg into the pan, the shell, I don't know why this is, the shell attracts pieces of shell. Try it sometime. Just drop a piece of shell in there. And then you'll notice that when you dip the egg into the shell, that little, little piece is actually, or the shell into the egg that little piece is actually drawn to the egg. It's so much easier to get it out. Like, and then if you use a spoon, that it's almost like that shell will never, you'll never be able to scratch it out. But the egg shell, that's how you remove shell from an egg. Ha ha. Well, I should re-say that. That's how I remove egg from a shell. <laughs> that's it. Take two. That's how I remove shell from an egg. I know, guys. I know. It's getting late. It's getting late. Oh, man. I can have Wella's Ranchero tomorrow. Ha. I don't know why this keep, thing keeps freezing on me. There we go. I got back. Greetings from Connecticut. Hey, Connecticut. I remember seeing fireflies here a long time ago. Right on, Susan. How neat. Lord of the spatula. Yes. Eggs on a burger with cheese melted is so good. Right on. Yeah, yeah. I, I recommend Home Alone or the Grinch. Yes, I love the Grinch. A time notification would be great. I got you, my friend. I got you, Katie. Never had an egg on a burger. That would be interesting, though. I recommend trying it. It's really, really good. It is. Yeah, the shell draws it in. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You're king of the grill. Thanks, friend. Ralphie, Red, Red Rider Gun. Yes, you'll shoot your eye out. That's good to know. Hoorah. Yep, saw that on Rachel Ray. Really? No kidding. Another person was telling me I should watch that. Uh, thank you for letting us in your house. Uh, you are a blessing. You're a blessing, Linda. You're all a blessing. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, when I do an egg, I let it, I can tell kind of when it's ready by, you know how the, the egg white is clear? As especially with the, I tell you, I'm going to do a commercial with these pans here. I can just let the egg sit there and watch it. I wait until I can see the white transferring through the bottom and coming up to the top. Once it's about three, the white has gone through the clear about three quarters of the way. Then I just flip the egg once. I'm one of those guys. I like running eggs too. Most people I know that do this will make a um, egg sandwich egg. That's where you let it fry a little bit and then you poke the egg on purpose and let that yellow spread. That way when we eat it, it isn't all runny and run everywhere. 
I never do that. I like a nice runny egg. And I just realized that when I bite into it, that's going to be the price I pay. And hopefully I have to pay for that price on the plate, not my shirt. But either way, I still get to eat it. Ah. Okay, we're just about done here. There we go. Yeah, we're good to go. All right. Oh, man, I need this so bad. I'm going to throw the egg on top of the cheese just to help that melt out a little bit more. And then I'm going to put the onion. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's a, a mess around here. I'm going to put the onion on the bottom along with the tomato slice. And then I'm not, I'm just going to add the ketchup at the table. So speak in the table. Hang on, give me one second. Make sure I'm on the right track with everything. Uh, I need to put the, hang on, I need to put the eggs back so they don't go bad. And, all right, yeah, I'm going to get y'all guys to the table. And then I'm going to start setting up for dinner. The sauce is still doing its reduction. I'm not going to add any water to it. I'm just going to let it reduce down until it's the right consistency. And I'm going to call that good just for time saving because we've almost been here for two hours. Thank you guys so much for being here. Oh, yeah, my white powder pistol. I've been cleaning it. So here's the cylinder. Yeah, I might not should do that right now. They'll flag me for it. Okay. Sure, really throwing some water in that so the sugar didn't dry like that. I make my own sweet tea, and so I have one cup. I, I like having just one of everything, maybe two. I'd like to get where I've got two. Actually, in Sonny's cabinets, I have seconds of stuff where if I do have somebody over for dinner, uh, but this is my favorite cup, it's my Loomis Washington cup i don't know if you can see it it has the big horn on there it says loomis quick stop that's just dried sugar in there because when i make my sweet tea i mix the sugar and the mixture in there oh don't tell me i have failed myself if i don't have any ice that's a sign of distress in my house i have these little things that i do that let me know where I am kind of mentally and my ice trays are one of them so my house might be in a layer of disrepair of some kind at almost any moment you know maybe the floor needs swept maybe the dishes aren't done maybe maybe I didn't make the bed that morning normally I always make the bed but maybe I didn't now with my ice trays when I run out of ice I know something's wrong because I always take the time and energy to refill my ice trays. Then I cycle them one after the other, right? So as long as I go to the freezer and I see that, I, it kind of has this, it's almost like the Peter Pan happy thought or Dumbo's feather or that movie Inception where he had the top, right? wasn't that Inception? Uh, DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio, he had the top that he would spin. If it fell over, he knew he wasn't in the dream, but if it kept spinning, he... He knew that he was in the dream because in the dream, it would just keep spinning. It's how my ice trays are for me. So as long as I've still got one ice tray of ice, I know I'm still on track. And why don't I have to stop and reflect? I know I'm weird, but I got this way over a long course of time. Let's see, where? Yeah, I got a paper towel, friends. All right.
we're all weird in our own ways. I like your weirdness. Thank you, my friend. I'm glad. It's like when people say I'm crazy, I'm like, yeah, but good crazy, right? Like, not bad crazy. Okay. Good to go. Goodness, look at that. Does that look good or what? Oh, yeah. I keep saying I wish you could smell it. It smells amazing. I won't lie to you if I miss it. I'll let you know. <sighs> I should have turned the camera around. I made it. <laughs> yeah, good luck, charm friends. Okay, let's get this on the road. <laughs> so good. Yvonne, hey, hi. What are you doing up, Night Owl? So cool to see you. It took me a while to get here, so I didn't know if you were going to be asleep when I got dinner on or not. I'm so glad you could make it. Okay. I'm starving. Mm. Mm. The egg. The egg. Mm -hmm. Well worth it. Mm. I did not realize how hungry I was. Oh my goodness, that's good. It doesn't even need fries. Wow. You remember how I was talking about that crisp layer on the outside? It just really adds to the flavor because it's kind of like browning the hamburger. You know, when you brown crumbled hamburger, if you're going to make like, uh, like on stovetop or hamburger helper. It really brings out that flavor. Same exact thing. I try not go overboard with it, but I always try and brown at least one side of that patty. And it sure makes a difference. Number one, a little bit of salt for that egg. And maybe a shake of pepper. There we go. Right. And see, I haven't hit the center of the egg yet. <laughs> I like my pepper. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Ma'am. Yes, exactly. Texture enhancing the flavor. Right on. Looks good, Matt. Hope you're enjoying it. Loving it, my friend. Yeah, right on. Eggs are my favorite. Matt makes the best burgers. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Hoorah. Uh, I don't know how to make a poached egg, though. Mm, who is that? Susie? I will show you. Maybe tomorrow for breakfast, because I got sausage, we could do poached eggs for breakfast on a live video. Maybe like, all right, wait. First, I got to figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. But at nine, I've got something I got to take care of. Honestly, I've got to take care of a jury duty thing at nine, or I'm going to wind up getting in trouble. Uh, yeah. Maybe tomorrow for lunch, let's do eggs. And I'll show y'all guys how I poach eggs. Figure, all right, I want to be sure that, hmm. How about we meet back here tomorrow, 12 o'clock my time. You know, let's make it one o'clock my time. That way I know for sure I can make it. That's West Coast USA time. So I'll see you here. One o'clock. 
if things change, I'll do an, a live video ahead of time just to let y'all guys know what I'm doing. Hi from North Carolina. Hey, North Carolina. It's so cool, guys. <laughs> Mark says, heck yeah, poach them eggs. I'm going for food. Bye. <laughs> Bye, friend. Bye. I'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. I'm going for food. Bye. <laughs> right on. Uh, my job here is complete, then. Okay. Now, all right, let's check that sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Falling apart. Okay. Come on, guys, let's go check that sauce. All right, here we are. See what we got going on? It's starting to kind of like, well, it looks like sauce now. Notice how it's all like blending together? Loving it, loving it. And just in time, too. I get one more turn on it. Yeah, oh, yeah, because it's evaporating. Normally, what I would do, I'd give it another 12, 14 minutes. I'd let it reduce down where almost all the liquid is gone. And then I would add maybe a cup or two cups of water. Then let it do this again till almost all the water is gone. And then add a cup to two cups. And then the third time, let it get down about like this. Once it's like this, it's perfect. That's the consistency we're looking for. Let me set y'all guys down over here. I can get my stuff together. Y'all guys who have known me for a while know that I'm always trying to get my stuff together, right? <coughs> and let's see what do I have. Oh, I've got to get dishes done. What do I have for a bowl? Okay, so check this out. This is how you make a paper cup, but I'm going to use tin foil. I'm going to make a paper bowl instead. It's very simple. So we want a square. So I'm going to get a pretty much a square piece of tin foil that I'm going to fold into a triangle, corner to corner, like this. Then the top corner is where it meets. I leave that on top. I bend the edges around like so on both sides. Then on the top, I select each side and I bend that back down this way. And then the next one back the other way and then open that up. And what we wind up with is this like pocket, then I can take that and scrunch the bottom. I've made a little tin foil bowl. Now remember though, if you're handling something hot, don't hold the bottom, because that tin foil is not very thick. All right, after we're done here, actually, I might go ahead and do another reduction just because it's not as wet as I would like it. It's a little saucier than I like it. I want a little bit more water in there. Hang on, where are my chips? Okay, the moment of truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Mm -hmm. Right on. Perfect consistency of salt. Waiting for the heat. Hang on. Mm. Okay. The flavor is very good. Let's see. The, the heat might sneak up on me. It is. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a sneaky little hint of the fire starting. It doesn't have an initial hit to it. It says the flavor is very, very good. The salt ratio is perfect. And the heat's getting there. It's not, it's not super hot. It definitely has that flavor, though. It's way more than paste picante. Oh, now it's picking up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're getting there. Oh, that's good. That's a good batch of sauce right there. What I might do, I'm definitely, definitely going to add water and, and reduce it again. I'm going to do it two or three more times. That'll help bring that spice out and that heat, and it'll still help mix the flavor a little bit because it's got a very, very good flavor. It tastes just like my dad's sauce. It just it doesn't quite have that. It hasn't mixed well enough together yet, so it's not quite there. Funny thing, and okay, since I'm running out of battery on my laptop, I'll end with this story. It's about soup. This guy, a counselor, was he a counselor or a speaker? He might have been a speaker. He talked about all of the different tools that we have to learn in sobriety and in life recovery. And anything we learn where we're trying to improve our lives, we have to learn all of these different tools. And as we learn how to use those different tools, they wind up complementing each other. They become very natural. One will complement the next excellently. He referred to it as soup, basically. Because with soup, we take a bunch of different ingredients and put them in a bowl, and then we wait. And as they cook, eventually it turns from being a bunch of different ingredients into one thing. It turns into soup. And so his point was that though in the beginning, in early recovery of any form, we have all of those tools, and maybe we're even good at using them, it takes the time, though, for those tools to become natural and one naturally complement the next without really having to think. It's a point where he was trying to make where the time that it takes to become good with those tools and for the right next thing to come to us is much like making soup. There's a point where it turns from ingredients given time into the final product. And that's our soup. But in this case, though, it's hot sauce. And this hot sauce, though it's good, it needs a little bit more time. So I'm going to finish up my burger here. Find me a Christmas movie. I've got Dish. So whatever's playing is what I'm watching. And i finish out my sauce. I'll see you all guys tomorrow morning. Let you know what's going on. And then tomorrow at 1, uh, West Coast Time USA, I'll see you all guys for learning how to poach eggs. At least figuring out how to poach eggs Matt Brown style which is my knockoff of Emerald Lugasi. Thank you so much for being there for me, friends. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Never give up, never surrender, because you're worth it. And remember, I believe in you. Ah.